Hi, in a previous video we took a look at this KRK Systems uh, Rokit 6, or Rocket 6 as uh, some people pointed out it should be pronounced, um, uh, powered near field studio monitor speaker, and how we repaired this by uh, scraping off the inf now infamous black gunk of death which is a potting compound put on there for good reasons to stop our vibration on the components. But unfortunately, in a lot of these, apparently it's like very widespread in the industry in this particular Gen 2 series of uh, Rokit speakers. It's uh, hydroscopic, which means it absorbs moisture and it actually becomes conductive and it's on the PCB and the components are shorts them out. And in this particular case, it destroyed our poor little tweeter. Um, so... <laughs> I'll link in that video down below and at the end if you haven't seen it. But thank you very much to an anonymous AV blog forum user who uh, donated these two uh, Rokit 6 speakers and um, they've both failed. So, like, <laughs> this is really bad. When, like, what are the odds of both of your speakers failing? There's a huge problem with these uh, Gen 2 Rokit speakers. Now, I am led to believe that they have fixed this in the Gen 3 speakers. So these are Gen 2s, just like the uh, other one here. And let's take a look at them. Uh, apparently, I'm told that one, uh, this one here with fault on the top actually uh, has a very similar twee tweeter oscillating issue to the one that we had over here. So I'm not gonna power that up with the tweeter um, actually attached. But this one here apparently has some other fault. So hopefully we'll get like some other fault inside this thing uh, rather than just the uh, hydroscopic conductive black gunk of death. And you can actually see here how these cones are a little bit, actually, because these were like the same stored together or whatever, they had been stored for a couple of years. You can actually see that the cones faded. So maybe that's been getting some sun, some direct sun or uh, something like that. Because there is a big color difference between those two there. And of course, this one's in, in great nick. It's a much, yeah, it might be a newer unit. I'm not uh, sure of the exact age. But anyway, um, let's pair up this one first and uh, see what the problem is. And you can also see the difference in the yellow here. Look, there's hardly any yellow left on this one. So yeah, I suspect that they've, I, I don't think that's just like a different, uh, you know, depth of color in the uh, silk screen. I think that's, um, you know, some sort of uh, UV fading or uh, something like that. So they may have been uh, stored in uh, under, you know, UV lights or sun or something like that. And yeah, I think that's uh, confirmed on the back here because look, uh, we've got a nice solid yellow on the back. So I don't think that one's seen the UV. All right, we'll power this one on and see what we get. There's no hum, no snap, crackle and pop. Okay, let's feed in a signal. Hang on, check this out. Watch what happens when I turn it on. Whoa, full cone excursion. Yeah, something's up. As well, that's for the, uh, tweeter. And so listen to this. And Sounds two, like so there's no woofer at two, all. It's supposed to be loud and unbalanced him. Okay, so that is one sick puppy. Um, it looks like the uh, woofer's gone. Um, and we're basically only getting the high frequency stuff out of there. I know my voice is, you know, high pitch, but geez, this is ridiculous. Let's crack it open. All right, it looks identical to the previous one, but... I see some differences down here on the board straight away. Let me show you. This is the board uh, from my previous uh, repair, previous speaker. Check out how these two uh, filter caps here are exactly the same size and uh, diameter. Whereas this one down here, clearly two different di diameter caps in there and the silk screen actually follows that. So it looks like um, they're different revision boards. And also you'll notice that the uh, XLR input board here is uh, blue and the one over here previously is green. And uh, yes, as a lot of people uh, pointed out, the RCA connector input, this big huge block here, is um, to stop the air escaping through the hole that would otherwise be in the back of the RCA connector there. I just still think it's just a ridiculous amount of effort to go to to seal up the uh, XLR, uh, the RCA connector. But anyway, it's nothing wrong with Gild and the Lily. It's great. And yes, we do have the black gunk of death on this and we'll take a look at that. But the first thing that stood out to me was the bulge in that cap. These, 
Yukon caps, um, just one hung low brand caps, and that's just failed. So you're going to replace that, of course. These two filter caps are going to be for this power amplifier, which is for the woofer. It's the higher uh, powered one. So, um, yeah, straight off the bat, you'd get those uh, both those caps out and replace them. These ones don't look raised at all, but still, if you're going to replace these, as a matter of course, you'd probably replace these two as well. And there it is, the hydroscopic black gunk of death, but oh, hello. Hello, is that poor resistor? Oh, is that fried? Wow, that was that 2.2K that we actually uh, replaced last time because the lead was corroded on it. But what the hell is, like, this is just unbelievable. This stuff is an absolute plague, and it's like every Gen 2 speaker from Rokit has to, like, I believe all the different sizes, not just the 6 inch, the 4 and 5 and, and the 8s uh, uh, are afflicted by the same black gunk of death as well. And it's just, man, horrid. Wow, you should be able to pick up some bargains on eBay, though. And before people ask, uh, and it was a popular comment on the previous video, is that no, I don't think this is in any way any sort of uh, deliberate planned obsolescence thing by putting this gunk in and they knew it would become conductive. They just, like, picked the wrong co potting compound. I don't know uh, where they got it from, but it's just Murphy came and bit them on the ass. Um, but they don't want to seem to own up to the fact, KRK Systems don't want to own up to the fact that this is actually a problem, apparently, and that's just ridiculous. I mean, come on, you know, people, especially technical customers, understand that, you know, shit happens. Um, someone's got to deal with it, and who are you going to call? But yeah, there's no way that a company like KRK Systems, whose basically only product is... You know, near-field reference monitor speakers. That's their whole bread and butter. They are not going to deliberately put something in their planned obsolescence in a product that's not a consumer product. It's going after the pro audio market, and people expect their monitors to work for a long, long time. There's no way they did this deliberately. That's just BS. So I don't believe that at all. Let's measure our gunk. Whoa. Our gunk's good. Our gunk's good. Um, this meter goes up to 50 meg. Uh, let's go into the one down here. Oh, this one's not too shabby, actually. This one, uh, maybe in a drier environment, hasn't picked up nearly as much. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> there you go. That's actually the worst we've seen. That's around the woofer. No wonder the woofer is not working and probably why. I'm still not sure if that resistor's burnt out, but yeah. Anyway, still a problem. So we've got caps and black gunk. Unbelievable. KRK systems, they did so well designing everything else. I mean, they're, you know, these, this company knows what they're doing with all the excellent ceiling and stuff that they've got in this thing. The, you know, the real, the properly designed uh, acoustic enclosures, the drivers, everything else. But it doesn't matter diddly squat. If you screw up some basic electronic stuff, like just using quality caps and, you know, and no one, like, proper, like, uh, you know, reputable brand potting compound. Because any reputable brand potting compound wouldn't have done this. All right, so I'll go in there and scrape this off. Uh, it gets everywhere, by the way. It just, like, crumbles off. So, yeah, definitely do it in some sort of uh, tray or something like this, because it's going to make a mess. Anyway, let's give it a go. The good thing about this board is that it is a single-sided board, so you don't have to worry about, uh, you know, scraping it off or anything like that. You don't have to worry about digging out any tracks. Ugh, horrible job. Somebody's got to do it. Unbelievable. Look at this. And, yeah, it's, have we started to corrode some of those links? <laughs> it stuff's just awful. This is just so medieval. Now, as I said, some of this is not uh, conductive at all, at least what it measures um, on a multimeter at a, you know, a volt or whatever, or two that it's actually measuring at, doesn't mean that its, uh, it's dielectric properties can't change uh, based on the applied voltage, because speakers are, you know, it can be quite high voltage, there can be, you know, 
30, 40, 50 volts inside a um, speaker system like this and amplifier board like this and that could change the properties and cause it to break down and conduct or something like that. But I'm scraping it off and I'm not seeing any of the liquid. So none of that uh, water entrapment that uh, I saw last time, but yeah, each one's going to be different depending upon uh, the type of material, how it, how it aged, what sort of uh, you know, humidity conditions it was stored in and all that sort of jazz. It looks like the stuff that's not conductive actually still has a bit of compliance to it and sort of like peels up instead of crumbles off. So that stuff is it's still in reasonable nick, but you would take it off as a matter of course. It's important to sacrifice blood to the repair gods. There's the back of the board for those playing along at home and that uh, 2.2k resistor in there measures okay, so I probably won't touch that. And there's those two boards side by side. This is the new one I've got and this is the old one. You can see quite substantial differences. Look, uh, in terms of uh, this vertical resistor here, it's horizontal over here and it's got different caps arranged in different ways, as well as uh, the difference um, in the size of those caps there. But those two caps, even though there are uh, very different uh, footprints, are basically uh, the same cap, well, you know, 1000 volt, 35 volt rated. And other massive differences, um, the 16 pin um, op amp down here, 8 pin op amp over here, relay on this one, no relay on this one, so presumably no, or, or different power on uh, D-thump uh, protection, so yeah, they're, they're vastly different designs. But I just noticed this one over here that I said is the new one is actually an older revision. This is Rev 2.0, it says it in there, I won't show you. This one is uh, Rev 3.0. So this is the newer one. So they've removed the relay that they had over here and they've gone to this uh, 16 pin uh, op amp down here instead of the 8 pin job and a few other things different. And as well as the two different size caps there. So this is the board from the other uh, speaker that's supposed to have the big uh, oscillation issue. And sure enough, the black gunk there, it's actually very low. Look, 140k. It's like, it's the lowest we've actually seen. It's interesting that that's actually around the power resistor, which is presumably going to get a bit uh, warm there. So maybe that's caused... Uh, the heat around, the localised heat around that area has caused that particular potting compound to go quite low. Because if we go over here, that one is perfectly fine. Check that out. Seems to have really corroded away top of that electrolytic can there. Wow. It's terrible, Muriel. All right, I've replaced the cap, so I've cleaned it up, and uh, let's give this one a go. This was the first one that, uh, let's give it a bell. Hey. No. Woofer still doesn't work. Aha. Uh -huh. Nothing coming out of there. Amplifiers oh, and, no, it just came good. Uh, I expect this, this came to good. have one of those, um, wow, uh, like integrated. Let's uh, you know, try that again. Spoilers, no, but, it's you know, come good. A common fault with these. Uh, things, maybe there's the, another uh, cap in there that's a bit find it on first silly search. buggers, so but the schematics not listen. available. Should still be relatively easy to uh, work and uh, repair and troubleshoot something like this because so that's actually working fine now. So I don't know what that uh, delay was there with the woof. Um, so unless it happens again, I'm not going to go tracing that one down, but these sound quite reasonable, if a little boomy, I think. On the uh, preamp board. Anyway, we could actually uh, but, yeah. test that, I guess, by just... Uh, Does sound fine. Seems to be articulating speech just brilliantly. See if it, uh, That's a winner. All right, here's this uh, faulty one, which I have not powered up yet, that had the uh, same or similar uh, tweeter excursion loud um, oscillating issue that my previous video had. So I've replaced the caps. I've cleaned it up. So let's turn it on. Where's the volume at? Here we go. Fingers crossed. Oh, I saw the light come on. Oh, hello. I saw that cone excursion and do the excursion again. Unbelievable. Well done, KRK. Putting conductive gunk on your boards. But it's become conductive with age, I'd say. So that's just an unbelievable issue, which as far as I'm aware, KRK just refused to own up to. It is massively widespread. These two came from the same, the same set, from the same person, and both of them failed. 
<laughs> this is just like a plague. I believe only the Gen 2 uh, speakers out there, either the 6 inch, the 5 inch, the 8 inch or whatever uh, size it is, I believe they all have uh, the same issue. How many of them out there? Tens of thousands of them? I don't know. How many of the Gen 2 KRKs do they sell? They're one of the highest selling, you know, if not the highest selling monitor speaker on the market uh, at one point. Don't know if they still are, but yeah, there, there must be tons of these out there. So you might be able to pick up uh, some decent bargains if you search around on eBay and other uh, local classifieds and things like that. So you should be able to clean them up. Odds are you're going to pick yourself up a decent set or a decent sounding set of, uh, and decently well constructed. I do like how these are constructed. Anyway, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed that uh, repair. I'll use these in the lab, I think. I just need one of those uh, USB doodaddy boxes, and the RCA is not the best way to connect them up. And I've just got that playing from my phone at the moment. It's, you know, but it's, they sound pretty decent. Still, you know, need to evaluate the performance, compare them with my uh, Alesis M1 Actives. Um, well, you know, there could be other corrosion still on the boards within. So, you know, I'd be surprised if they're still working in 10 years time, maybe. But uh, yeah, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Hang on, there's something a little bit strange with these speakers and both of them do identical things. There's a little like crackling, sizzling uh, noise in the tweeter and it's regardless of volume. Even at the lowest right up to the highest, it doesn't change. It's sort of like persistence in there. I'll try and turn the gain of my uh, camera mic up and see if I can get it. So does anyone else who owns the uh, Gen 2 row kit like this, do you get the same sort of very low level, you can't hear it, you have to put your ear right up to it, but that low level sort of crackling sound in the tweeter, it's, it's not nice. Anyway, if you like that video, please give it a big thumbs up because that always helps a lot. Uh, subscribe using the bell icon thing. Go over here, subscribe, and then you'll get notified, maybe, if YouTube decide, their algorithm decides that they want to send you the notification. As always, uh, subscribe to my EV Blog 2 channel as well, and forum links down below and all the rest. Catch you next time. Thinking I'm so wide and nerdy. Thinking just too wide and nerdy. Thinking just too wide and nerdy.